Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. On today's show, we're going to talk a little about fall application of herbicide, not just any herbicide. These burn down products that we like to use in the fall, Banville and 2,4-D. I, I want to talk about how come I'm in this big rut and you're standing up on a hill. <laughs> I look yeah. across and I'm looking at your shoulder. I'm like, what in the world's <laughs> going on here? Uh, all right, you know, there's a lot of things that get out of balance. Like, for example, in your soil, nutrients can get out of balance really easily, especially when it comes to application. You want to put on the right amount of different nutrients, but how much do you really need? We're going to focus on phosphorus today. How much phosphorus do you really need to apply? As always, we've got an Iron Talk and a Weed of the Week coming up later in the show. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. All right, it's fall, and there may be some questions that you have as you're driving by fields. One of those questions that I get a lot from non-farmers especially is, why do some farmers till their residue into the ground and others leave it on top? Okay, there are many reasons here, but the number one reason is it speeds up the breakdown of that residue. Once the farmer puts that residue into the soil, he's also introducing a whole bunch of oxygen into the soil, and with all that microbial activity and that oxygen there, it burns that residue up much faster. Another big reason that farmers will do tillage is they want to have a nice, even seed bed for next spring. So by doing that tillage, they no longer have the unevenness that all this residue presents, and they can have a consistent seed bed. So when they're putting their seeds in the ground, they're all facing exactly the same situation, and hopefully they get even emergence of their crop. And if they get even emergence, now the crop isn't competing against itself where one plant's bigger and shading out the other plant. They're all the same height, they're all coming up at the same time, that evenness of stand is a big thing. When the farmer tills in his residue and in effect makes the ground black again, that soil warms much faster than soil that still has residue on top of it. Especially in the northern part of the country, this is a real big issue. If a farmer is going to go out there in an already short growing season and he has to delay planting a week or two weeks because he's got residue out there versus black soil, he just can't afford to do that. So that's the number one reason on many farms why they will till in their residue. Okay, well I think the number one reason for many farms is they're trying to fix problems. Maybe they had a disease issue in this year's corn. Like let's just say for example, Goss's wilt, something that survives in the residue and could potentially impact next year's crop. So by doing tillage, they bury that residue. So now all that inoculum for the disease is not there on the soil surface. So they have a much lower chance of having that disease again next year. The other problem they may be trying to fix is compaction or ruts they've left with tires in the spring if it was too wet or in the fall if it was too wet. Either way, you've either packed the soil or if you get some ruts out there by doing some tillage, you could fix both of those situations very quickly. So for a farmer, it may be about getting that soil back to normal and the only way they can accomplish that is by tillage. Darren mentioned burying diseases, but you can also bury insects. That was a big reason why our dad and our grandpa used to do a lot of tillage. It was to bury European corn borers or other insects way down deep in the ground. Hopefully then they would die and you'd have fewer incidents the next year. Well, there are lots of reasons why farmers do tillage and every farmer may have a slightly different reason. They're the same reasons that farmers would do no tillage. Uh, whether it's soil preservation or, or so on and well, so forth. Well, the opposite reasons of why farmers would do no tillage. So yes, if you want the soil to stay cooler, you want to preserve more moisture, you want to reduce erosion. So just some different reasons why you would look at no tillage or very reduced tillage. But there are still a lot of farmers who do till, and we just wanted to explain to you today that there are a number of really good reasons why they do that. Well, one reason we didn't talk about that farmers may want to till is controlling weeds like like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans will provide tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate and will be built on the Genuity Roundup Ready to Yield trade. See them in action at extendfollowafield.com. No one understands your farm, your field, and your soil like you. 
I'm Myron Stein, and at Stein Seed Company, we know your field demands a choice. That's why Stein's corn breeding program combines our industry-leading genetics and superior standability with the most sought-after traits, giving you the best choices for maximum yield. Learn more about Stein's hybrid lineup by visiting steinseed.com or contacting your local Stein Seed dealer. There's no clock on this job, just the timeless hands of intuition and effort ticking from within. An endless cadence of committed work, from the passing of Mother Nature's final frost to the hanging dew at harvest. Around here, wheels are always turning, and watches need no winding, because success never rests. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. My data is mine, not mine. Mine to share. Mine to keep. It's mine when I want it. Mine where I want it. And only mine. My data is mine to analyze. Mine to put to work. Mine to control. It's mine. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. How much phosphorus does your crop really need? You know, whatever crop you're looking at, there are different nutrient needs, and the big thing is just understanding exactly how much that crop is going to remove from the soil, and also how much that crop needs to have a good healthy plant, a good healthy stalk that's going to stand until but harvest. But you know what? It starts with having a good soil test and knowing how much you have in your soil to begin with. But yes, you do have to look at what that crop is actually going to remove. So we encourage you to download the free Ag PhD fertilizer removal app for your smartphone or your iPad. We developed this app in conjunction with IPNI, so it's really good data, years of research behind it and everything. Uh, we've basically used a lot of their data, and what we found is most people don't really know what the crop does need. So let's just talk about 60 bushel soybeans, for example. A lot of people say, boy, I wish I could get 60 bushel beans. Well, you know what it's going to take for phosphorus is 44 actual pounds to raise the grain and another 14 pounds to raise the stove and that's actual phosphate, not MAP or DAP pounds, that's actual phosphate, so 58 pounds total. Well, when you think about corn, if you're raising 200 bushel corn, 70 pounds of phosphate are going to be removed by the grain, another 32 pounds are needed for that stover. So again, here's 102 pounds of phosphate that need to be available to be successful raising a 200 bushel corn crop. All right, so let's come back to that soil test. If you get a good soil test, you're probably testing the top six inches, right? Okay, so if you've got, let's say, 15 parts per million of P1 phosphorus, and that's basically available phosphorus, in effect then, for six inches of soil, you've got to multiply that number by two. So 15 times two is 30 pounds. And there are a lot of labs that will tell you, oh, that's a pretty decent level. Well, no, it's not. That's not going to get you 200 bushel corn. That's not going to get you 60 bushel soybeans. You're going to have to apply a fair amount of phosphorus. But you also have to understand in that soil test how much organic matter you have, because for every 1% of organic matter, you're going to have roughly 4 to 7 pounds of phosphate coming available through the season through mineralization. So let's say I had 4% organic matter times, we'll figure the low level, uh, I said 4 to 7 pounds of phosphate per percent of organic matter, let's just figure 4. 
Okay, so four times 4%, that's 16 more pounds. So I got 16 pounds available there. I've got 30 pounds already available in my soil. So that's 46 total pounds. Is that enough to raise 200 bushel corn or 60 bushel soybeans? No, that's still not enough. So you've got to apply more phosphorus. Okay, that's a lot of numbers, but let me, let me say why we're doing this. So why a six inch soil test? Because a majority of your root system is gonna be in the top six inches. You've got lots of roots there for about any crop. Uh, yes, there are some that are going to go deeper, but you got quite a few of them right there in the top six inches. And then why do we multiply parts per million on a soil test times two? Because a six inch soil test basically represents about two million pounds of soil. So whatever our parts per one million are, well, we just need to multiply that by two to get pounds per acre. Here's the other really important thing to understand. Your soil pH needs to be right. That's the first thing you've got to look at on the soil test. If your soil pH is outside the range of 6.3 to 7.3, so let's just say, for example, at 7.8, you're not going to have as much phosphorus come available as what you think. What's happening is you're getting tie up in that soil. In high pH soils, you'll get tie up with calcium. So calcium and phosphate will bind together to form calcium phosphate. That's inside soluble in water, your plant can't take that up. On the low end of things, you can get phosphorus binding up with aluminum or iron or something else there. So you want that pH right. If your pH is in the 6.3 to 7.3 range, you're in pretty good shape. If it's outside that range, I'd apply even more phosphorus than you think you might need because of that tie-up factor. Our studies and university studies have shown that you're going to need approximately 50% more phosphorus when you broadcast compared to a banded rate. So in other words, if you were going to put out, let's say 60 pounds of phosphate in a band, you would need 90 pounds of phosphate in a broadcast to be similar in terms of uptake and overall efficiency. So that's a really big deal and that's the reason why we want you to start looking at all these factors. We're talking about this today because let's face it, phosphorus is high priced compared to where commodity prices are at today. But that's not to say that phosphorus can't still make you some money on your farm once you understand how much you need, how much you already have in your soil, how much you're going to have to apply based on your application methods, your soil pH, those types of things. So we really want you to understand this. You got to get smarter on the farm when times get tougher. And this is an incredibly important step is knowing how much phosphorus you actually need for your crop. Keep in mind the form of phosphorus you use will change the overall availability. For example, there are some very available liquid phosphorus forms that are low salt. We use some of those in furrow on our farm. That's a pretty good way to go if you want maximum efficiency as opposed to some of the dry forms. They're not going to be as readily available. It's going to take more time for them to break down. They have more chance for tie up, that kind of thing. So not only keep in mind where you place the phosphorus, but it's also the form of phosphorus that you do use when you're looking at overall, how many pounds do I actually need to produce the crop I'm looking for? Well, and we're talking about how much it takes to produce the crop, not to also produce a whole bunch of weeds out in your field. If you've got weeds out there, they're gonna take up your fertility too. We'll show you how to stop one of those weeds coming up later in the show. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Welcome to the 30-second tour of your local poet plant. Local producers sell us tons of their grain. We grind it, mix it with water and special enzymes. The result is fermented, distilled, and dehydrated until it's 200 proof alcohol. Corn oil is extracted, and protein and nutrients are condensed, dried, and turned into animal feed. Bringing our tour to an end with high protein feed and cleaner burning high octane fuel. Visit Poet.com to learn more. This year's projected U.S. soybean yield will lose over half a billion dollars per point in shrink. Eliminate shrink in your bin. Store grain without lowering moisture content with the AgriDrive Bullseye Temperature and Moisture Controller. The Bullseye monitors air temperature and relative humidity, allowing your fans to utilize the weather's natural condition to maintain your grain at market moisture. Fan run times drastically decrease along with the cost of over drying. Eliminate shrink today. Call now. 
How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Corn Head from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. We know that the future is liquid. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizer's constant research and development creates next generation products that seem like science fiction. But the fact is, the yields, the sustainability, the food and fiber that our customers produce season after season is not a dream, but a reality. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers, helping you grow the future. You know, there's always something new to talk about on Ag PhD, but it seems like more than anything the last year or so, we've been talking about some really old products like 2,4-D and dicamba, especially with crops coming down the road here that are going to be tolerant to those two herbicides, especially soybeans and cotton, which is pretty exciting. However, we're still using these products just in a regular situation, especially in fall burndown. Well, yeah, and the fall burndown thing might be a little new for you on your farm. I know for us, we just started doing some fall burndown maybe five, seven years ago, something like that, when we switched a bunch of our no-till acres over to strip-till. But whether it's no-till, strip-till, for that matter, even conventional till if you want to, you can certainly use these products in the fall to eliminate especially winter annual weeds. That's really what we're targeting here. And we see more of them, obviously, in a no-till or strip-till situation because typically that fall tillage you do wipes out winter annuals. Well, if I want to avoid the fall tillage and save my soils a little bit more, reduce the erosion, I'm going to have things like dandelion, mare's tail, pennycress, a whole bunch of different winter annual weeds. I've got to get those under control now because by spring, they're going to be terrible. When we're talking about 2,4-D and dicamba, we're going after broadleaf weeds that, that are tough to control. Both these products work well on broadleaves. They don't do much on grass. So in all likelihood, if you've got some grass out there as well, you're going to be mixing Roundup in with the 2,4-D or dicamba. Now, you, you may say, well, why not just use Roundup? Certainly, we have some Roundup resistance, especially with things like mare's tail that were just mentioned. But, you know, there are some weeds that were more effective controlling with 2,4-D and dicamba than we would be with Roundup alone. All right, let's take mare's tail, for example. We used to have a big mare's tail problem on our farm five to seven years ago. And I decided, hey, in the fall, we're going to hit it with Banville. And I just thought, you know, that pint rate, we've tried that a number of times in the spring. Yeah, it's okay, but it's just not great. Let's go with a full quart. And to be honest, I had to check the label because I, I didn't know if a full quart was even labeled. Well, it is for use in the fall before going into corn. Now, I don't want to use Banvel or Clarity in the fall at a quart rate per acre if I'm going to plant soybeans or another broadleaf crop in the spring. But if I'm planting a grass crop in the spring, by all means, use that high rate of dicamba, a quart of Banvel or Clarity. I mean, it wiped out everything for us. Mare's tail, dandelions, all these winter annual weeds and even some perennials we were fighting, they were all gone and I had residual going into the spring because that's an incredibly high rate of Banvel or Clarity, double what you would normally use in crop. Let's get back to the real basics here. I mean, back when Darren and I were kids, the, uh, the most important thing we focused on on the farm was weed control. Why was that? Because every farmer knew if you didn't get all the weeds controlled, and I mean right away, you did not have top yields. So yeah, you can say, hey, it's gonna cost me 20 bucks to make this application of a quart to Banville in the fall, and oh, that's expensive. Well, yeah, it is, but if I can permanently eliminate my mare's tail problems and dandelions and some of these weeds we'd been fighting, you know, just kind of nipping a little bit here and there, and oh, that didn't quite do it, and that didn't quite do it, and now we got an in crop, and now it's the next year, and why? Just eliminate it once and for all. So you gotta look at these things as return on investment. So in our situation, I'd still invest that $20 if I can eliminate my problem permanently. I was just thinking about this. Let's just say you paid $5,000 an acre for ground. If you could pay $5,100 instead of $5,000, but for that extra hundred bucks, eliminate Canada thistle, eliminate mare's tail, eliminate dandelion, eliminate you know a whole bunch of different weed species, would you pay the extra hundred bucks? And I bet there's probably half of you that are saying, 
yeah, I'd pay the extra hundred bucks if I never had to worry about those things. Hey, that's what we're talking about here. Well, maybe it's not you spend never. An extra, maybe it's not an extra never have to worry about it. And you wipe out most of those weeds for a long time. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. Honestly, where a lot of the questions come from when we talk about fall weed control is guys that are going into soybeans. Now, you already eliminated one of our really good options. You said, well, you can't use that high rate of bandvel if you're going to plant soybeans next right. year. What can you use? Well, I would use, I'd use 2,4-D. 2,4-D doesn't have nearly in the... In the fall. Yeah, in, in the, the fall. fall. In the fall. I don't want to use it in the spring, but 2,4-D isn't going to last all the way from now until May 1st when we plant soybeans on our farm. It's just not going to happen. Could bandvel last that long if I use it at a quart rate? Yes, it could, especially in cold conditions. So yeah, I'd use 2,4-D at a high rate instead of the fall bandvel. I prefer fall Banville where I can use it, Banville or Clarity. But, oh, and by the way, that's the other thing. A lot of people say, oh, drift is such a big concern for Banville and Clarity and 2,4-D. It's not a concern in the fall when everything's already dead. So that's one of the reasons, too, why I love spraying this in the fall, sometime in October, right after harvest. You go out, hit those weeds. You don't have to worry so much about killing flowers and trees and other crops or anything else. You still and, have and to I'm, be careful. You right, I'm not, saying, careful. I'm not saying drift all over the country. I'm just saying it's not nearly as big a concern, especially like the volatility side. Well, one big concern that many farmers share is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Get ready to take control of weeds like never before. Enlist will build on the Roundup Ready system with new herbicide and trait technology, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Our weed of the week is field pennycress. Field pennycress is a winter annual. That means it's going to emerge in the fall. It's going to grow a little bit in the fall. It's going to survive over the winter. And then chances are, by the time you get to spray in the spring, it's going to be big. So this is one of the weeds we were just talking about with Banville and 2,4-D that you want to hit it in the fall. Certainly you can wait until spring, but by then that weed is already big. You don't have as good a chance to get it under control. The other thing is that it has a very strong odor to it. And if you've got livestock, for example, dairy cattle, and they start eating that field pennycress, uh, that's going to put an odor even into the milk. So it, it can be a big issue that way, not just in terms of, well, how much yield is that weed going to rob, but it could also be a problem down the road. When you talk about that, it would be out in pastures where the livestock is going to eat and, this. And also alfalfa feeds. Yep, that's true. But in pastures, a lot of people like to spray their pastures in the spring, and especially the late spring after they've done all their cropping. Okay, well, when is field pennycress active? It's active in the fall and the early spring. So you've missed the window. So what I'm trying to say here is if you've had some pennycress problems, you need to switch some of your pasture spraying to fall or spray an additional time in the fall. When we start talking about alfalfa, what are you going to do there? Because we don't have a lot of good choices unless there, you've got Roundup Ready alfalfa. There are two decent choices that you can spray in any alfalfa, and that would be using Pursuit or Raptor, uh, which are basically the same chemical family or you could use a strong rate of buckthorn. The yep. real key is just getting out there at the right time. As Brian was mentioning, you want to get it when it's small. You don't want to let it get huge. And definitely don't say, well, my first cutting, I'm just going to cut and, and then I'll worry about it after that. No way. That first cutting is so valuable. You don't want to let field pennycrest get going. Plus, it's an annual weed, so you definitely don't want to let it go to seed. Okay, with pennycress in corn, I'd probably start with something like Verdict. Uh, Sharpen would be fine. Uh, Balance Flex has some activity, but it's not great. Post-emerge, I like Status the best. Turning to wheat, pretty easy. Start with Sharpen, follow up with Husky, that's what I would do. And then in soybeans, I like our three pre-strategy, Metribuzin, either Authority or Valor, and one of the yellows pre-emerge. Post-emerge, there's nothing that's real great. Yeah, Pursuit or Raptor has some activity, but it's not 100%. So that leaves Roundup as your best choice or in Liberty. soybeans. Or yeah, Liberty. Or Liberty. Both, both of those are very effective, and most of the soybean acres, you can spray Roundup or Liberty on. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH.
Perhaps the biggest challenge for farmers over the years has been the fact that there are so many things a farmer must do correctly in order to make a profit. You need to be a mechanic, a grain marketer, a top-notch agronomist, a great machinery operator, and have many more skills as well. In today's Iron Talk, we'll discuss how can you tell if you're doing one of your fall jobs just right. We'll look at the best way to determine if you're doing deep tillage successfully on your farm. If deep tillage is one of those jobs you need to do in the fall, it's important that you do it correctly so you're not wasting your time or making things worse on your farm. The one tool that you need to carry with you when walking fields or doing tillage is a spade. I prefer a tile spade, and here's what you do. Just go out behind your deep tillage implement, put the shovel in the ground, and stand on it. If the shovel goes all the way down into the soil, chances are your tillage has successfully broken up the compaction in your soil. So this fall, whether you've done your tillage already or not, Take a spade out into your fields and check to see where that hard pan is. You'll have better results from all your tillage and you'll have better yields next year. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. We know that the future is liquid. That's why Agroculture Liquid Fertilizer's corporate sales force is the best trained, best equipped in the industry. Because our communications, our relationships, our ethics are as strong and as innovative as the products we design. That's why our customers trust us. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers, helping you grow the future. Wake up, breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a Veil Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. A Veil makes more pee available to your roots, here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushes per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a Veil. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Working in agriculture over the past three decades, I saw a need for an accurate way to apply dry product to seed. That's where our Changing Times applicators come in. The CT applicator brush sifts powder into small particles resulting in proper distribution. Quantities can be adjusted by the speed of the brush rotation. This allows for even and accurate distribution of product, application at the time of planting, can be used with any seed delivery system and saves farmers time, labor, and money. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leaders and Teleslope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with SoilMax. Visit SoilMax.com. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seedbed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but if you're looking for more agronomy information, we invite you to tune in to Sirius XM Channel 80 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday for the Ag PhD radio show. And don't forget to tune in to the next Ag PhD television program, where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. 75 to 95 percent of soil applied phosphorus may be tied up and made unavailable to plants. Farmers use organic proteins and other fertilizer innovations to ensure their crops are fed properly. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.